the next speaker is Saharj Basari, and the title of the speech is United We Stand. United We Stand, Saharj Basari. Please help me welcome him to the stage. When I was on my way to the National Speech and Debate Tournament just last week, I was really nervous. I kept thinking of all the ways that I could fail by either making breaks in my fluency or citing a source incorrectly or simply just forgetting what I had to say. So naturally, I looked to my coach and said, Miss G, I think I'm going to mess up at this tournament. Miss G turned back to me and said, Saharsh, Saharsh, it's okay. I know you're going to mess up at this point. <laughs> when I woke up this morning, I saw a strikingly similar parallel. One in which when I woke up, I thought, what am I going to rank at this tournament? Or the speaking competition? How am I going to do? And I started thinking, why am I thinking about results rather than thinking about how I'm going to speak? So I decided to ask the smartest friend I have. Google. <laughs> and they told me that as a whole, the Harvard Business Review explains in March of 2018 that American children all around the country, and not just stopping there, children all around the world have seen an increase in the competitiveness they've been feeling. In fact, a study by the Harvard Business Review showcases that compared to 50 years ago, children have twice as much competitiveness now. What does that mean? It means that SAT scores are on the high, but it means that sleep is on the low. And that's problematic. And since competition's been increasing over and over, not just in the educational arena, but in the social one, today I'll be discussing with you as a whole how we combat this problem and why it's such a systemic issue within our society. First, let's talk about how this is a problem in our social, in our social sphere. Now, the Wall Street Journal reports just four months ago that the problem we're seeing in the status quo comes down to the fact that children have high standards for themselves, specifically teenagers, when it comes to how they make friends and how they're interacting with others. The reason why? It's something which other speakers have came up here and talked about. It boils down to social media. Now, it's no surprise that social media is a golden veil. It convinces others that, as a whole, the people that we're looking at on our Instagram feed or on our Snapchat have a lot better lives than they really do. You and I both know it. When we're posting something on social media, we don't post the grimy gruel of our normal day. We post the ideal situation, the best that we have, in our perfect vacations or the beaches that we're on or the great times that we're having with our friends. We don't talk about how the air conditioning in our car broke down on the way there. We don't talk about the time that we tripped and spilled ice cream all over ourselves. We talk about the best case scenario and the best world which we had. The problem with this is that it's been increasing standards for children all around the United States and all around the world. Children are convinced that their friends are having a great time and are spending lots of time with each other. And what that forces them to do is it raises their expectations, making them feel more isolated and ensuring that in the long term, they feel like they need to compete more with their other friends to be as socially active and socially capable as they are, creating an unrealistic expectation, one in which they can never actually hope to keep. This is extraordinarily problematic because it means that people aren't hanging out with their friends or spending time with their friends simply because they want to, but rather because they feel like they're forced to. They're competing to have a good time. And everyone knows that competition and working hard doesn't really go hand in hand with simply just having a good time and relaxing. When we decide to put these two things together, it's only led to us in the long term having an increased problem with having our social spheres as a fun and diverse place. But let's stop looking at the social issues and the status quo, and let's talk a little bit about education. And if we look across this room, we may notice one similarity among all of us. I think you all know what it is. It may not just be our skin tone, but it's the fact that we're all the sons of first immigrants, sons or daughters of first immigration immigrants. And that's key, because these children tend to have a lot of high competitive pressures placed among them. But it doesn't just stop toward this one exclusive group. Individuals all across America, whether you be 6th, 7th, or even 8th generation immigrants, or whether you've been here when Christopher Columbus landed down in Plymouth, we have to understand that as of right now, children have higher educational standards and expectations more than ever. And that can also be attributed to increased social media. Whenever a mother sees that somebody else's son has managed to win a competition somewhere, it increases the pressure on this mother to be able to pressure her own kid in order to make sure that that kid competes. 
And that's a natural instinct. Parents want their children to succeed. We can't blame them for that. That's just biology. But here's the thing. Unless we decrease this amount of competitiveness happening between students, what we see is that students aren't going to spend time developing proper social skills, get into extracurriculars, and spend time developing life skills which allow them to become leaders. Rather, they become educational machines, grinding away time and time again. And what they do is they learn information, but the moment they get to the test, they dump all this information on the paper and they forget about it. In fact, I don't even remember anything I've learned over the past year. I just remember how I studied for the tests. And that's a problem which we can see all across the United States. The Brookings Institution explains in an article from just seven months ago that in the status quo, as educational standards rise more and more, whenever other skills are forsaken to be able to do so, children become more stressed, allowing for us as a society to become less cohesive. We start working against each other, finding ways to undermine our competitors, ensure that our own peers don't do well academically, rather than working together. Because the end goal of an individual and the reason the educational system hopes to train every single one of our students is to help them become productive members of society. But when these members of society directly work against each other, it's clear that as a whole, we don't achieve the very means that the educational system is supposed to bring to, to us. So, how do we solve this problem? First, let's look at how we solve it as an individual. As an individual, the answer is really clear. We need to start working smarter rather than working harder. Learning our basics and ensuring that we actually study to be able to understand information is key toward building long-term educational growth. I mean that it will be easier for us to learn more complex projects or ideas in the long term. But as a whole, when we all do this as individuals, it makes it easier for us to work together and actually learn information. Decreasing our competitiveness because now we want to learn for the sake of learning rather than learn for the sake of succeeding. But as society, it's clear that we don't need to actually be able to compete against each other so visibly. Rather, we all need to stick to ourselves. Rather than bragging about our children's accomplishments, or rather than subtly flexing our accomplishments to our friends, we should be working together and ensuring that as a whole, we teach our friends the way we manage to be able to succeed. When I learn to be able to do something, my goal should be, help, should be able to help others and show them how I manage to learn to do it rather than just hoarding this information for myself and wanting to use it to win. And this, though this may not work for every single individual, our goal as a society is to work toward, toward a productive group rather than working as individuals. After all, united we stand, divided we fall. Thank you.